Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bag up, bag up, bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord, Lord, Jesus. What the, what, what you doing, Terry? Hey, Sooner Football fans. This is your Sooner Football Fans Podcast. you got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boom, Terry. And we are coming at you from the newly refurbished and still corona-free podcast, blah, 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 podcast palace in Norman, Oklahoma. Where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have eligibility left. Rob, one of the things that we haven't been doing um, is uh, mentioning our, not sponsors, but our uh, Partners, partners in crime, in, in crime, okay. tailgate connect. Although he can't connect you with no tailgates this year, Dan right. Donnelly. Right. Uh, but this website is still there, tailgateconnect.com. Um, if you're traveling in a year that is not COVID, um, and you want to go to some of the best tailgates in the country, Dan can set you up at tailgateconnect.com and also teambarfinder.com. You can get the app, mobile app. Um, at the Apple Store for your iPhone and Google, uh, pl- uh, the Google Store for your Android phones, will link you up to where you can watch your favorite team who has uh, what bars in your town has Sooner games, Steeler games, and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, Rob, before we get into a little bit of Sooner talk, um, how about them Steelers, huh? <laughs> Yeah. 3-0, right? Yeah, 5-0. 5-0. Oh. 5-0. First time since 1978. <clears throat> 5-0. Do you know what happened in 1978? They won the Super Bowl. Yes, sir. You think they're going undefeated? Oh, I don't know about that. Gonna, but gonna They're a contender. out the 72 Dolphins. Mm, they're a contender to get in there. Okay. Uh, I am not sorry. To all of our Cleveland Brown fans out there. Who, sorry, not sorry? Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Who um, I'm wearing my Cleveland, I put it out on Twitter today, Cleveland Never Rocked shirt today. Got Does that mean you're a fan? Huh? No, <laughs> not a fan. But, um, you know, I'm not sorry that my uh, Pittsburgh Steelers put a arse kicking on the uh, Baker Browns and – Harassed him all day long. No, you know, and everybody's going to go, well, he was hurt and da 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 Him being hurt didn't have nothing to do with your offensive line not being able to block a single stealer. So, yeah, I'm happy about that. Yeah, they're pretty good. They got a chance. Yeah. So, one of the things that everybody needs to do, Rob, is what? Mm. Go buy their official... Toby Roland. <laughs> Good God, Rob. I just want to see how long you were doing it. <laughs> Your official Toby Roland unhitched the wagon t shirts. We told you we'd have it. We put it out on Twitter and everywhere else. But in case you haven't seen, you can go to www.unhitchthewagons.com and order your Unhitch the Wagon t shirt. And the book? The book you can't get there. The oh, book you go on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon and Barnes and Noble is where you get the book at. Unhitch the wagons: the story of Boomer and Sooner, a must-have for all Sooner fans. He gave us one personally, by the way. Yeah, and we will be giving that one away. And we will be giving it away with a personally inscribed message from T. Rowe himself. But I think I'm gonna win it. You think so? <laughs> Am I eligible? <laughs> How much money you got, Don't. Rob? <laughs> If you can give me a little bit of cash, maybe I can work that out for okay. you. But, you, know, um, you know somebody on the inside? Yep. <laughs> but we, but you have to be eligible for the contest, and we're going to give more details on the contest, maybe later on in this podcast, maybe Ooh. not. But to be, to be eligible for it, you must purchase and, and unhitch the wagon, the wagon t-shirt. t-shirt. Yep. And they are cool. Everybody who's seen them. Well, uh, they're not as cool as ours. No, no, yeah, because we're in ours. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and if you want to buy us an extra one, you can buy us one. Well, that certainly can't hurt you in the, uh, in the, in the draw. <laughs> yeah, in the draw, yeah. <laughs> we can be bought. So <laughs> if you want the book, you know, uh, jump into our uh, DMs 
and let us know what you would do for the book. Oh, oh Lord. Boy. <laughs> probably anything <laughs> like you do for a Klondike bar, I'm out. <laughs> I probably just opened up the fence. Don't do that. It was a joke. But um, do you want to jump right into the ste- uh, Sooner stuff? I start to talk about my Steelers again. Yeah, this is not a Steelers podcast. <laughs> well, you know, it could be this week. <laughs> um, you see we had a transfer this week? Yeah. Or actually hit the portal. You hit the portal. But, you well, know. The one position we really can't afford to lose anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was seeing that much time, though. It's no, probably, you know, you don't hit the portal in the middle of the year. Still, though, I mean, I'm sure he was a practice squad guy. We can't really afford to lose yeah. anybody that's. True. <clears throat> but. Helping the team. Um, you know, Sooner's getting ready to take on the Horn Frogs of TCU. One thing that everybody's been asking about are the suspensions, and Riley won't tell us a dang thing. Won't squeak a bit. <laughs> what does that tell you, that it, they're not playing or that they are? We don't know. I know, but what, what do you feel like that leans you to? Since he I won't just, say, yeah, they're playing, does that mean they're not? Or I think so, but I, I just think he doesn't want to talk about it because if he says they're playing, they're going to bring up more questions again. Yeah. So he just goes, there's no change, whatever it is he says. Yeah. He, um, Man, I hope they play. For, you know, the Sooners on SI uh, 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 said Lincoln Riley was noncommittal Monday when asked on Ronnie Perkins, Trey on Bridges, and Ramonde Stevenson would be eligible. Have they ever met weekend. Lincoln Riley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. Come on. Uh, Jaden Hazelwood, however, is due to be back soon. Probably not this week, but I'm thinking I'm hearing next week he'll be back. Terry, I'm kind of excited to see how Ramondre Stevenson – changes that backfield yeah i wish we could see this weekend that's really what i want to see yeah well i mean there's a chance right there's a chance that at least <laughs> no. those two are back well now we sound like dumb and dumber well, you're saying there's a chance if there's a chance there's a chance there's a chance um but uh the uh ucla o-line transfer chris murray finally got the okay he apparently will be playing this weekend we'll get some playing time for yeah. sure Apparently well, he's, he's not been that pra- big, but he's been he's pra- pretty mean. Yeah, he's been practicing with them the whole time because they've been expecting, you know, the okay any day. Um, is that a booty call, Rob? I don't know who it is. <laughs> so it might have been, huh? Um, but um, you know, it, it's frustrating. You know, the word is that Perkins may not be able to come back. When everybody else does, you know, insert your thoughts here. We don't know why, but we can make it an assumption why. Um, We're not going to do that, but uh, I sure would like for them to, I mean, I understand it, but, uh, you know, as a fan, I'd really like for them to be a little bit more transparent about what, you know, what's yeah. happening there. But Yeah. Um, but so we still won't, you know, we won't know, probably won't know until, you know, everybody got excited when Perkins was, uh, what, up at Iowa State. And everybody thought, ooh, he's in his jersey. He's close. But apparently he wasn't close. We're not close enough. So we don't know anything about that. Um, one of the things that I found interesting as well was Grinch uh, was talked about this week uh, needing defensive leaders. But first, he needs consistent playmakers who are peop- who are people that are willing to follow. Hmm. Needs consistent playmakers that people are willing to follow. I cannot read. What does that mean? There's no. Well, it means, Terry, that your uh, McAllister education was not that great. <laughs> oh, you mean about? <laughs> yeah, not my reading <laughs> skills, Rob. <laughs> about what? Okay, yeah, my bad. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what's it? I mean, here we are. You know, four games into the season, there's a there's a lot of experience out there, and not one of them has stepped up to be the leader of the defense, well, and they're needing the leader of the defense. What the hell has to happen? I don't know, but if you don't have one, you don't have one. That don't mean they're not great players, but somebody will emerge. It always happens. Yeah, somebody will rise above and take that spot and and lead that defense. They just they just need some more time to gel. They've been, you know, apart, and and the COVID thing has you know kept everybody. From getting close blaming to blaming COVID. Way to go, Rob. Yeah. Way, way to take the easy way out. Let's it's blame COVID. It's, 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 it's COVID the virus's d- fault. You know, Kansas State didn't beat us. COVID did. That's right. right. 
because <laughs> we don't lose. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. But y- you would think that, you know, some of the guys back there with as much experience as they have, and, you know, maybe it's replacing a dynamic leader like Murray last year. Um, nobody has stepped up to have that respect from anybody. Well, <clears throat> I mean, for the most part, I mean, we do have some some guys in the backfield that are aged, but for the most part, they're they're still young. Yeah, you know, some of the guys that you know, <clears throat> typically it, it seems like somebody from a linebacker position, it always kind of feels that role of leader, yeah. and all those guys are fairly young, and then you know the defensive line, we had two transfers in, so they're still kind of just figuring their way out. Um, and honestly, I don't know if any of them would follow Buki because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're six foot they can't six, see 300 pounds, <laughs> it's hard to follow a guy that's five foot six. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that they can't. Yeah, the Oompa Loompas followed Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka <laughs> didn't follow the Oompa well, Loompas, right? I, that's I mean, what I'm you're not saying. I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. I I'm know. We don't ever say anything bad it, about it. It's just hard for a, you know, somebody like, somebody like Buki who's really struggled to go in and lead that team, and he's probably yeah. the eldest. Yeah, you know, right. He's probably the. He most certainly s- looks older than all of them yeah. in the <laughs> face. I mean, the team, but <laughs> somebody, somebody will emerge. They'll they'll gel together and they'll get it figured out. Hopefully, I mean, that's yeah. what we're pulling for, right? Yeah. And see, here's one of the things that ticks me off about you know the media here at Oklahoma is they take my thunder. I've been planning this podcast, you know, to what we're going to talk about and what was everybody talking about. Um, today on the radio. I didn't get to listen much today. Yeah, well, the Oklahoma Sooners and their fourth quarter woes. I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. I thought we were going to have a special podcast, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Okay. I want to read these stats to you, Rob. All right. Which stats are we talking about? Okay. Oklahoma football. How do the Sooners fix their fourth quarter woes? This comes from Ryan Aber with the Oklahoman uh, off of one of his articles. In its three conference games, OU has outscored its opponents 27-3 to in the first quarter, averaging nearly 7.5 yards per play. They've also dominated time of possession, holding the ball for an average of nearly 10 minutes in the opening quarter. But, um, as he puts it, the, the Sooners look like an old jalopy smoking and sputtering to the finish line. Well, Oklahoma, that's for sure. Oklahoma has been outscored 45 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Man. Its offense averages less than half the yards per play compared to the first quarter and the time uh, of possession being much more equal. You think they're just getting tired? I don't know. We're going to get to that because they they address this. Um, The Sooners let a 21-point late third quarter lead slip away against Kansas State. Led by a touchdown with eight minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the Iowa State before losing 37 to 30. Um, led Texas 31 to 7 with less than four minutes remaining in the game hmm. before the Longhorns came back to force overtime. During Big 12 play, Rob, here's one that'll jump out at you. The Sooners have punted 11 times, eight of those have come in the fourth quarter. Wow. Okay. Hmm. There are, and, and as uh, this article says, there are two obvious answers physical and mental. Riley says it's the later. Riley says he doesn't believe the problem is due condi- conditioning. Uh, we see it. We got a lot. Uh, we got to play a lot cleaner foot brand of football, our brand of football in the end. I think we've had some opportunities to close out games, and at times your mentality does shift a bit. And then he goes on to say, we've won a lot of games that way. Not this year you haven't, Lincoln. <laughs> you know, in the past, and we're going to talk about those. Um, we're putting ourselves in some decent situations. We've got to execute in those situations much better, and we got to uh, coach better in those situations. Well, it certainly doesn't take an Einstein to figure out that <laughs> in the first half of all of those games, we – you know, we did mostly what we wanted to. Yeah. Dominated for the most part. Uh, and the second half gave Kansas State away, gave Iowa State away, and almost gave Texas away. Yeah, I mean, we gave Texas away as far as winning the game in, in uh, what's it called, uh, without going to halftime, whatever that word is. Mm-hmm. But 
and he is right. He, Oklahoma has won games. Here, let's go back and talk about games that Lincoln Riley and the Oklahoma Sooners could have, maybe should have lost. We're going to go all the way back to Lincoln's first year. Oh, boy. We lost two games. We lost to Georgia, and we lost to Iowa State in Lincoln Riley's first year at home, 31-38, to to which a game that, to me, resembled the K-State game this year. Oklahoma got comfortable. They quit putting any pressure on them. It was over. And they got a little bit of confidence and jumped back in the game. They just kept fighting and then came back and won. I remember that. Yep. So. Same thing with Georgia. Yeah. I mean, we had them on the ropes. Yep. Sure did. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I wasn't going to bring that up. But thanks a lot. Well, you in know. the second half, they opened up holes in the defensive line that uh, me and you could have pushed the baby <laughs> carriage through there. But um, Oklahoma beat Baylor that year 49 to 41 in a game that Oklahoma should have mopped up Baylor. Oh, but they yeah. didn't. That yeah. was, wasn't that Art Browse year out and. All hell broke loose or whatever, but they were terrible. Um, and uh, Oklahoma should have won that game, or Oklahoma won it, but they could have lost it. Yep. <laughs> uh, Texas, 29-24 that year. Um, Kansas State, 42-35 that year. Yeah, that's the year that we chewed all of our nails off, right? Yeah. Oklahoma State, 62-52. So there are four games right there that Lincoln could have lost. Instead of being 12-2, and two, we could have been, do my math here, eight and six. Yeah, that would not have been good. Yeah. Okay. And that year, arguably, and I've heard people talk about it, not just locally, but on the national level, that, you know, Oklahoma may have been the best team in the country, just got beat by yeah. Georgia. It's possible. Yeah. That's Two, kind of the story of a, our life since 2000. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 2018, Lincoln goes 12 and two again. Great records, huh? Uh, lost to Texas, 45-48. And lost to Alabama in the bowl game, 45-34. Which, if you take that first quarter out, Oklahoma just didn't do anything offensively. I think it would have been a different game. Yeah. We were, you know, we were down 21 to nothing. But that's how the game goes. Games we won that year that could have, should have, maybe have lost. Army. Everybody in the world knows yeah. we should have lost that game. <laughs> <laughs> Army had the ball three quarters, three freaking quarters oh, of that yeah. game. Just, just pounded it. Yeah. Um, we won that game 28-21. Oklahoma State, we won 48-47. And West Virginia, 59-56. So, again, three games that Oklahoma squeaked out in 2018. Uh, could have been, you know, nine and five. 2019, we lose to Kansas State, 41 48, and got mopped up by LSU in the bowl game. Yeah. <clears throat> Texas, we win 34 27. Baylor, we have to come from behind 31 to three. Epic yeah, comeback. epic comeback. Mm -hmm. 34, so we know we can come back. At least we yeah. could last year. 34-31. Uh, Texas Christian should have beat us last year. Um, and I don't have I, – I did not put the Iowa State game on here. Iowa State should have beat us last year. Um, both of those games came down to the last, basically the last play of the game. Yep. So Lincoln has lived on a log – you know what? What are those called? Those log rollers? What's that called? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Didn't you used to watch the uh, lumberjack games on Wide World of Sports when they'd have the? Yeah, is there a name for that? If there I is, know. I don't know it. I don't either. Log roll. Y'all know what we're talking about. Yeah, it's he, he's lived on that. It's been crazy because I mean, like last year we had the best offensive line in the nation, or was it the year before last? Year before last. Yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have. We shouldn't even been close. The, the only reason that it was is because we struggled defensively. You right. Know? And then last year we played better defense. But this year we're struggling defensively again. So, well, Oklahoma, you know, instead of winning those games, Oklahoma has lost two of those games this yeah. year and won one. Texas, yeah. um, 
you know, we won, lost to Iowa State, lost to Kansas State. Um, just, well, I mean, terrible. Th- think about this, Terry. In the Iowa State game, uh, we had no confidence there in the last part that we were going to stop them at all. Yeah. No confidence. How do you think the guys on the field feel? Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, if we're losing confidence, they got to be losing confidence, and that makes it tough to play football. Yeah. So, uh, is it conditioning, Rob? Or is it talent? Is it? I think it's a whole bunch of things rolled into one. I think, I think the biggest part of it is, is we were, you know, we were pretty much doing everything we wanted to against Kansas State and against Iowa State and against Texas. And we were like, yeah, hey, we got this. Yeah. And let's just kind of put our foot off the gas. We'll just coast to this, you know, victory. And the from other top, teams weren't done playing. From top to bottom? Are you talking about Lincoln? The coaching staff I'm and the about players, Lincoln too, yeah, because you can tell that he took his foot off the gas in on the offensive side of the ball, especially Kansas State, especially Kansas State. Yeah, um, I think they just got to go four quarters and go to the whistle, and if it winds up being seventy-seven to nothing, then so be it. So is is this team and Lincoln Riley gone on to what we talked about uh, in years past with coach, even Coach Stoops? I think got into it a little bit, where we're going to toss our hat, hat out there with has the big. Oh, you on it, and people are going to bow in fear, and we're going to be able to do whatever we want to. Well, do you think that mentality is running around not, Oklahoma right now? Not so much as I think that Lincoln is the ultimate strategist. I think once it's like a drag race, once you get a car linked out in front, you're like, okay, we've got this. We don't want to show everybody what's under the engine or right. what's under the hood. You know, so, so a little bit, I think, you know, third and fourth quarter, he's like, okay, let's, let's shift into neutral package so that. You know, we can save the horsepower for, you know, games. And then all of a sudden it's tie ball game and we don't, you know. I mean, I think that's part of it. Yeah. But I think part of it is probably conditioning. I've been to, you, you know, I haven't, you're not allowed to go to practice, Terry. <laughs> so I haven't <laughs> been to the practices. But I've been with an eyesight. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody's sweating, Terry. Nobody's out there drenched in sweat. Yeah. And I'm like. Shouldn't you guys be like hitting one another or you know doing some, some running or something? Um, Have you ever thought about hopping over and, and going over? A whistle? Yeah, yeah grabbing a whistle <laughs> and just go. Come on, let's do something. No, no, I, I wouldn't even want to second guess Lincoln and Bill <laughs> Bow and any of those coaches. They all obviously are, you know, fantastic coaches, and and I I still think probably the best coaches in the Big Twelve. I think maybe they're. You know, they need to – they're off track a little bit maybe or something. I don't know. But, um, I, you know, I feel like maybe we are a little bit under condition. So I mean, they're running out of gas because not only – And Lincoln, Lincoln said that last night, okay? He said it on the coach's show and yeah. bit his lip when he said it back. You know what I mean? We were gassed. I mean, you know, it was hot. You know, he kind of like – you know, everybody was gassed and everything else. Mm. You know, and I know, you know, listening to some of the, you know, players that played the game, like we do, that are on the radio here, I mean, the big ones in the trenches, it goes, you know, being a defensive player in the trenches is tough. I mean, you're always battling with the biggest guy in there. Oh, yeah, and, and think about uh, the big guy that just came in, Perion. Yeah. He's taking the center guard every play. Yeah. I mean, it's bad enough to just battle with one big old boy. <laughs> Now you got two coming at you. Right. And as a fullback. So. And now, you know, we're getting wore down. And I'm sorry, that that's unacceptable as a fan. And it should be as a coach. So there, you know, I think it's a conditioning thing. I honestly do. And you're not going to sit here and blame it on COVID because these kids have been away. Look, Lincoln Riley himself said, okay, and I need to look up these dates because this is something we need to talk about on a future one. Everybody else came back. Wasn't it in June? And Oklahoma came back in July, right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Lincoln said it was crazy to come back in June. And, uh, people questioned him about it. I need to look this up, but I know it happened. People questioned him about it and, you know, about getting into football conditioning, you know, game conditioning, and he said that's not that's not hard to do. Right. We can do that quick. Well, a lot of these teams, Oklahoma came back in July. I don't know if Kansas State, when they came back, is that one month, missing that one month? Because all these other teams, everybody else, 
You watched the Alabama game, Alabama Georgia. Oh, for sure, I did. Well, the first quarter of that, that was two Titans beating the hell out of each other, and then Bama took it over. Yeah. Look at Clemson. Clemson is just running through people like butter. Yeah. And 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 they make it look easy. Too. Yeah, it's not. It's not even. You know that second half of that Georgia Alabama game was just Alabama throwing haymakers at them for two quarters. Yeah, and you know I texted you early in that game and I said I think Georgia's defensive line and offensive line could go play in the pros right now. Yeah, and then in the second half, and then in the second half <laughs> Alabama kind of <laughs> paddled them. Yeah. So why is not Oklahoma conditioning wise at that level? That's a good question. You know, it, it, it's it's not scheming. Don't sit here and start talking about it, you know, um, you know, an, an execution and this and this. You don't execute when what, Rob? When you're yeah. out of shape. Right. Well, if you're honestly, tired, you don't execute. I think at the skilled positions, we're as good as anybody in the country. Yeah. Okay. Wide receiver, running backs, all those guys are as good as anybody in the country. I think the biggest deficit come – well, outside of the SEC and all the other major conferences, is offensive line, defensive line. Yeah, and and focusing you know more on the defensive line. Yeah, and I, I mean I've been happy. We've talked about this. Well, I've been happy with uh, the defensive line play. I think they have played great. They're the strongest part of our defense. They right are, now. but did they look like Georgia's, Alabama's, or no. Clemson's? No, no, they don't. No. I mean, Shut I up, think Rob. There's real potential there, Shut up, Rob. I don't want to talk about this anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, really, I think there's some some good potential with yeah. uh, Isaiah Thomas and uh, uh, Perry on Winfrey. But see, that's what guys. I'm saying. I, I th- the talent is there. There's something missing. I mean, and, and depth. You think depth, but I mean, it's still, Rob. I mean, I'm. You know, I know uh, the strength and conditioning coach. What was his name? Uh, um, Benny. I Wiley? Yeah, Benny Wiley. Uh-huh. I mean, we've seen his videos. We know he works out hard. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> you know, crazy. But is what he doing? Is what he's doing? Tra- you know, working for these big uglies down there. Well, you know. So, so we're getting some guys in there, right? right. Perry owns one of them. I mean, but there just is no depth. So those guys are playing their guts out in the first half, and they're winded in the second yeah. half, and the backups can't really provide. You know, it's it's a huge. I think. It's drop from the first teamers to the second so we got to get some depth in there you know we get perkins back that's going to help they won't you know yeah. be as tired but you've seen it uh in in uh what game was it that you know i think caleb was saying we got a blitz we got a blitz well we were getting to yeah uh brock purdy and and uh the kid from kent state yeah <clears throat> with a three and a four man rush yeah so we really don't have to blitz in that situation, although the receivers are still dead gum open. Um, <laughs> I think that's fixing to the change. They're making some changes in that defensive backfield. Well, obviously, um, Wood, what's that? Wood, Woodbridge, Woodward, Woody, Woody, Woody Washington. Washington, that's yeah. it. Um, you know, obviously he's going to start getting some more PT, and yeah. then uh, hopefully we'll see Jeremiah Cradell and some of them other you know five stars come in, play them. You know, they can't do any worse than the than the seniors that are in there or the juniors, whatever. Play them freshmen. Get them in there. Do you remember when we said all we want is a top 25 defense? Yeah. Do you know what we got? A one, what are we, 100? No, a top 25 defense. No, we are not a top 25 defense. <laughs> yes, no we. way. <laughs> yes, way. We're in the top 25? We are number 20. Well, that's because the Big Ten and the whoever else comes is on the <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Probably right. But we're the number 44 scoring defense, so total defense, we're 20. Here's the shocker is that we're the number 10 offense and the number 10 scoring offense. So offensively, we slack down a little bit, and that comes down to being able to rush the ball. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but we want to talk about a few other things outside of Oklahoma football. Do you see that – um the Texas band solved the Texas football problem. Uh, no, you know, they remember, did you see the, all the news about Eleanor being out? The only one it's out the only there. One. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was been a whole deal. The athletic director said, you know, you don't have to, you know, sing it or anything else, but our alumni, it's a history, you know, it's tradition. And then, 
well, the Texas band is not going to the uh, going to be performing at the Baylor game this week because half of the band said they weren't going to play the Eyes of Texas. Well, it's it's actually we've been working on, on the, the railroad. railroad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're probably sick of it. Like yeah, everybody else yeah, everybody. Else, they're like, really, we have to. Dun, 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 dun. And there's n- ugh. But the Texas band said we're not doing it. Really? Because nobody came over. I don't know. They just the, because it, you know the word is it's racist or has racist implications. I don't. Know. Oh, it does. Yeah, I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I don't know how it well, goes that's for the not Texas. The real words. I know. To <laughs> I don't know what the words are to it. No, I know the last one is "Oh, you sucks." Yeah, the last. And they say that no matter where they're at. Yeah. Right. If they're yeah. Texas Tech, they still say "Oh, you sucks." Yeah, but you know they're living rent free in our heads, right? Yeah. But. Uh, and Odell Beckham has been banned uh, from the LSU uh, locker room and facilities for two years. Why? For handing out cash. Oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't Odell Beckham go to Texas Tech? No. I can't remember. No, that was Crabtree. Crabtree. Yeah, Crabtree. Yeah, yeah, Odell yeah, Beckham, yeah, he, he was the one out there handing out cash, and they all said it was fake money. Well, no. Yeah, they said it was $2,000 that he gave away. A bunch of cheaters. You know, uh, and you know, during the playoffs, I'm like, I'm t- there was more than two. Th- that man, I promise you, carries around more than two thousand dollars cash in his oh, pocket. I'm sure. So, yeah. So he's been banned for two years, and then he can come back and give out some more money. Yeah. And here's something completely off of sports whatsoever, but it's Oklahoma news, southeastern Oklahoma news, down by my hometown of McAllister, Oklahoma. And um uh down by where my daughter's family moved to, which is where Greg, my son-in-law is from. Sorry about that. I had to get my phone, folks. Um to look at this um you know, I saw it yesterday and I was like this can't be real. Well, apparently it what, is. Bigfoot Nope. No, this is much worse than Bigfoot. Rob. Rock Nest Monster? Much worse than that. Much worse than that? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, oh, let me find it here. Um, now, we're talking about something real here, right? I mean, we've already kind of called into question the education. Yeah, uh, well, two men arrested on medical battery, maiming, and other complaints, and part of those complaints is cannibalism. Oh. And the tweet was, guys, a possible cannibal hillbilly black market castration operation got busted in southeastern Oklahoma. All righty then. <laughs> we'll not be going back down there. In Worcester, Oklahoma, which is in LaFleur Cl- County, uh, apparently these two guys, and I talked to Megan about it today, apparently they had like an Airbnb down there. <laughs> So everybody that was down there that had had chicken, you might want to go ahead and rethink that. <laughs> yeah, our buddy Steve Bullard put it goes as long as they didn't deliver any of the meat to crabs, I'm okay. You know, that's where all the uh, Italian restaurants are. But I did some investigation, and apparently, how they got caught was people come up missing. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody found a fingernail that was not well a guy went to um the hospital and he had been castrated uh but he had been castrated willingly and he willingly? told willingly <laughs> who in the heck does that he'd been castrated willingly <laughs> and okay, uh basically was... these uh, these two guys that were arrested they went to visit him in the hospital. They say, stated they had done it before with other people. This just makes no sense at all. And basically, they had Rocky Mountain men oysters. Ugh. Yeah, that's what they were doing with the castration. So did the guy have his own? <laughs> that's a, well, the guy that was in the hospital, they castrated him, and we were cooking. And I guess he. they said they'd done it before, never had anybody get have to go to the hospital i don't know interesting 
Yeah. And a little Hannibal Lecter action. <laughs> yeah, Texas Chainsaw. What would be? What would this movie be called? You know, you got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know, but I hope they served them with lava <laughs> beans <laughs> and a nice key in <laughs> tea. <laughs> the, the Oklahoma. Oh my God. Uh, the Oklahoma castration cannibal. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, but it, it this has happened. No. And apparently, but uh, not you know that's kind of funny. Ha! Huh? But apparently there was some trafficking, human trafficking involved, and some other stuff. Oh but if you see these two guys, <coughs> there's some weird looking dudes. Huh? Look like they've been noodling with their teeth. <laughs> Man. Doing something with their teeth. I don't know about noodling. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is just crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, that happened in southeastern Oklahoma this week. Yeah. And it's you know, been I've going been warned about southeastern oh, I'm Oklahoma. I'm telling you, man. Girl, I grew up down there. There ain't nothing, you know. And uh, there's nothing that would happen down there that would surprise me. Well, I my mean, dad's from down there. Yeah. From Hugo. And he said, listen, you don't go out on people's property nope. down there. Mm-hmm. Because they will bear you. Yeah. Nobody will ever find <laughs> you. And he was serious. Oh, my dad was too. We yeah. we used to go um, deer hunting down on the other side of Hartsarn, out by where this place is at, on a friend of ours' land. And my dad told us, if you come up on a steel or you come up on anybody, just turn around and walk the other way. Don't talk to them or anything. Cause these people will shoot you. Yeah. Listen, if we got any listeners from down that way, I apologize for anything that I might have said that may have offended you. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to apologize because I'm from down there. I know how we are from down <laughs> there. You know, there is still an unsolved murder. I don't need to go dig up your backyard, do I, Terry? No. Uh, there is still an unsolved murder of an OSBI and FBI agent in South Asia. They were flying down in that same area looking for pot fields, and somebody shot them down. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So... Now it's well, more. Just if you go a little further south, that's Pampa, right, Texas, where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> right, well, right, it was down by te- it, no Pampa's out in a. Uh, uh, it was down around Texarkana somewhere, oh, and there's right. where it was at. So, yeah, I mean it, it's it's a it's a rough area. You get out in into the hillbilly sector down there. Um, you know, there's crack, there's Mary Jo Juana, and all that fun stuff. Uh, used to be a big. Back in the day, back when I was a kid, it was pot and uh, whiskey, you know, moonshine stills. Uh-huh. And uh, all over down there, you know, they'd go out, clear clear cut some woods and, you know, plant some weed. But now they're not doing that no more. They're castrating people and frying, frying up their nads and what kind of money's in that? I, I mean, don't know. Yeah, yeah. How much can't uh, be like a you know <laughs> how much how much would somebody have to offer you to castrate you and eat your balls? Well, I don't <laughs> I don't think there's a price can be put on that, Terry, but I mean if you're in a restaurant and you're ordering some some uh what do they call them, mountain oysters or whatever? Yeah, Rocky Mountain. I mean, you wouldn't want to pay for five ninety nine or you know, six bucks. <laughs> so I'm thinking that that dude couldn't have got more than a couple bucks a piece. So I'm thinking mine are worth more than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just I don't know. This this is crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy world. But anyway, uh, any, anything happened in the world that, other than that that you want to talk about, Rob? Or we scraped the bottom of the barrel? Do we want to go yeah. back to talking about football? I don't know. We probably lost both both people listening because so. <laughs> they're all vomiting right now. Yeah, <laughs> but. Or, or no, people are right now, their listeners are Googling it up to see if we're telling the truth. It's yeah, true. I'm to Google it up when I get up out of here. <laughs> yeah. no, actually, I don't even want to. I don't yeah. even want to know. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll show you a picture of the, oh, of man. the guys when we're done mm-hmm. and that'll, that'll tell you something. But anyway, Oklahoma's taking on TCU this weekend. Yeah. What are you thinking? Uh, I have zero faith. Zero faith. I have zero faith. Well, they're not juggernauts on either side no. of the ball this year. Okay. Texas Christian lost to Iowa State. And the Kansas State. 37-34. Oklahoma lost to Iowa State 37-30. Oh, so they're four points. <laughs> Transitive property. And they lost to Kansas State 21-14. Oklahoma lost to Kansas State 38-35. And they beat Texas – 33-31, and Oklahoma beat Texas uh, 53-45 in 
462 quarters of football. Right. So where is your confidence that Oklahoma is going to go out and be a juggernaut and take care of business? Um, I think the first half we will own that. <clears throat> and then the second half we'll let them either get back, come back into the game or come back and beat us. Why would we expect anything else from this team? I mean, that's what we've seen for three straight games. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, ragging on them or whatever, but yeah, until well, they could put a full game together. I mean, we yeah, can't. until we can play, until we can outscore somebody in the fourth quarter, you know, or, 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 you know, if we're ahead by 14 and they score, a point, you know, they score a touchdown and we match it in the fourth quarter to keep it at 14. Right now, we've lost every lead. Well, what I hate, Terry, is. W- w- we're up thirty-one to seven, or whatever you know it might have been, and we're just you know stymieing them defensively. We're shutting down the run; they can't throw on us very well. You know, we're flushing the quarterback, and then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, it's like we don't even have a defense on the field. Yeah, well, and then we don't even have an offense again. Oklahoma has punted eight times in the fourth quarter. They've only punted eleven times. The entire season, eight of them would come in the fourth quarter. Is it a possibility we're getting out coached in the second half? I, I think it's like we said. I think Lincoln goes into this coast mode. You know, Caleb has said it before, and I'm sh- and I've seen other people going, "What are we doing?" Teddy Lehman was talking about on his show the other day. You know, used to Lincoln would just wear you down in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, when he had that, you know, big offensive lineman and everything, and run the ball we're not running the ball we're averaging 3.4 yards a carry right now so you think they don't have any uh confidence in our running game maybe it maybe that's it you know because i mean you're right we used to just if once we got up in the lead we'd pound you yeah ju- we're just gonna run right at you wear you down and I, you know i mean I, I mean i think lincoln sometimes gets a little fancy well i've said this before he gets a little fancy pants with his play calling when he doesn't need to yeah that you know, reverse that he ran twice against Texas that didn't work either time, and he ran it. Didn't it wasn't in overtime he ran it again, and it blew up. Well, I think that that was a desperation attempt to get the ball into some, somebody's hands that can actually turn the burners on. Yeah. Right? Rambo, he's one of the fastest guys on the team, I think. I could be wrong about that, but uh, he's faster than uh, Stogner for sure. Yeah. So we hit Stogner ten times, but we can't get the ball to Rambo at all. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma um, is averaging 3.6 yards per carry, allowing 3.4 yards per carry. Mm. Um, we're scoring 1.8 rushing TD per game. Yeah, it, uh, everything they got to get better with with all that. But even w- even through that, Terry, I still feel like the offense is good, and that uh, that Spencer Rattler is is showing that he is super talented. But, I th- you know, he's making some young mistakes, no doubt about that. No. Um, but but it don't take a whole lot of time to throw it right to a linebacker or a safety to figure out, you know what, I've, i got to look for that guy. Yeah. So, he's going to learn. Yeah, he will. I mean, I don't – it's just weird. I mean, I can't put my finger on, you know, we would all be different. I wouldn't have any more confidence if it had won the two games that we lost. I'd still be going to the same thing. But the thing that gets me is that we not just what we, you know, Texas had no timeouts. They came back 14 points on us under four minutes or whatever, how much time I said there was. Um, let's see, where was it? Uh with less than four minutes in the game, they don't score fourteen points, and Texas had no had no timeouts. Yeah, and then that one time we just let Sammy, Sammy boy, just kind of jog into the end zone. Yeah, man, I was wanting somebody to just knock him off his feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is he gone now? Is he finally graduating and leaving, or is he coming back? I know he's he's eligible next year. You know, everybody know. got an extra year eligibility. Uh, he needs to move on. <laughs> But, see, I mean, this is going to be a game just like that one in the rest. I'm going to be mad all day Saturday. And then for how long I'm going to be mad depends on whether or not we win the game or not. Yeah. Because I, I have full faith that this team is going to tick me off in the third, halfway through the third quarter and the fourth quarter and let Texas Christian come back, let the horny toads come back on us, and we're going to be sitting there, you know, don't have any more fingernails, chewing on – finger bones <laughs> trying to f- you know figure out what the heck's going on yeah you know i just i just hope they 
you know, finally put the game together that they're they're I feel like they're capable of, you know, playing. Yeah. I mean, I think we're we're capable of blowing this a uh, team out and really start to insert, you know, to become the power in the Big Twelve. I think I think we're that's in us. So hopefully they they start doing that. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what you've been smoking. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Well, I mean, we've I, seen flashes of them being <coughs> pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I've seen flashes. I mean, but what does that say? I mean, we're good some of the times. I mean, well, it just I think it means we're young. We miss, you know, the line I mean, hell, missing some blocks that you know. Kansas was up ten to nothing against West Virginia. <clears throat> Yeah. So hey, remember that year they beat Texas. <laughs> 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 oh, but you know that that's what I have. I'm not going to try to pick a score. I mean, I think it'll be, probably be like what the Iowa State and Kansas State game is. It's just going to come down to whoever has the ball last. Yeah, and, and whoever can execute in the fourth quarter. And until Oklahoma shows us that we can execute out execute somebody in the fourth quarter i have zero faith that this team's going to do anything i understand that but would it blow you away or shock you if we come out and just you know smoke them just put it on yes it, it would, would yes it would surprise you okay no. so you don't really feel like we're we're good we just we're just having some problems there's a problem somewhere. I'm not sure where it's at because this team. Everybody said, "Hey, we were ranked third in the country preseason, fourth when Ohio State was going to play." And now, right. <laughs> strictly off of you know, it's a new quarterback, but you know, a new defensive coordinator. They got a year in the system, and then Oklahoma isn't playing any different than they did last year or the year before last. And we got better players. We have the guys we wanted in those positions. Yeah, do we? Because I we, mean, we Rob, graduated the best offensive line in the country. Yeah, but okay, we got the number one quarterback from two years ago. Yeah, we got the number one, two, and five receivers. Yeah, but only one of them's playing, <laughs> right? Two of them are. Two of them are. No, no, no. You're right, Theo. Um, and then we got, I think, the number two tight end in the country that year. <sighs> well, if you can't block for those guys. They can't make plays. We got the best coach in college football. Then everybody's talked about the linemen that we've gotten over the last couple of years. You're the best offensive line coach. Everybody says that, not just in Oklahoma, but across the country. Bill Biedenboe is the best offensive line coach in the country. Well, uh, you so can somebody say that, please but... tell us what the problem is because we don't know. Other other than we're going bald, we're getting ulcers. I'm drinking too much on Saturdays. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know. Well, if I drank, I probably would too. So, you know, Oklahoma Sooners are like our, you know, this year is like our golf game has been the last couple times we've gone out. Yeah. You know, start off, you know. In the wrong fairway? Yeah, in the oh. wrong fairway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you start, you know. Three putting. I started off the other day. Four holes did really good, really. One, two, three, four, five, five holes. And fell apart you were the same way the day before <laughs> yeah. first cut you know oh, started gosh. you know what i don't mind being in the next fairway terry but i hate three button <laughs> <laughs> i hate it i hate it <laughs> yep but so we're not going to make any um uh predictions on what's going to happen this weekend i'm going to have faith that my sooners win i will do my part so, so what? All right, let's let's talk about your part because I think this is an interesting conversation. So, is this a new shirt? Nope. Oh, a new will, hat. I will wear the same bit of clothing I had on for the Texas game because we won. Yeah, but we almost lost. Yeah, but we won. But we won. Yeah, I don't but care. We gave up five hundred touchdowns in a minute and a half. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> we still okay. won. Rob. All right. I'm just. Yeah. I just want to know how this game works. Yeah. I want to have the you know same shirt on. I won't be wearing a hat. Now, what no. about me? Yeah, because I don't remember what I wore last no. game. You don't. Apparently, you don't care enough to do it. So, uh, well, I just you know, if I'm going to get on the bandwagon, I got to no. remember what I wore last week. <laughs> exactly. I don't. I'm betting it was the Billy Sims shirt, though. Uh, nope. No. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't actually wore it at all this year. <laughs> really? Hmm. Maybe that's the problem, Rob. Was oh, that the problem? Yeah. You know, didn't Caleb wear didn't wear his brand new, you know, sixty-eight dollar Jordan Polo OU Polo. Um, but, um, yeah, so I will, you know, 
I don't think we're going to do much for the game. Yeah. I'm just, you know, just going to sit here and. 11 a.m. kick, right? Yeah, 11 a.m. That, that kind of messes with our golf game. Yeah, I know. I was fixed to say, have you made our tee times for this weekend? No. Okay. Because I was thinking, you want to play nine holes? In the morning? Yeah. Might be cold. Yeah, that's true. It's supposed to be cold Saturday. It's supposed to be nice Sunday. We're going to play Sunday. We're going to play Friday afternoon late. So, yeah, we need to make tea times, Rob. Okay. I don't think there's a whole lot of people out there on in during the weekday, but I'll I'll see what I'm doing. Hey, that one Friday I played, there was a bunch of people out there. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a bunch. Um, Late afternoon guys out there with coolers full of beer. So... Um, but let's talk about Toby's book and okay. the, the deal. Like I said, we're, you have to have but the book you need to go buy. It is available at Barnes and Noble online. And uh, it's actually really Amazon. Kind of cool. It is a cool, it's I mean, a, if you're a Sooner fan, you need to have it. Yeah. You know, I mean, whether you, you need to buy two, probably to give one to your kids, grandkids <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a neat book. It's a, you know, and, I, and like I said on the last podcast, it's something, it's, it's something like the Bootlegger's Boy or Bob's Book or, or in, any of that. It's if you're a Sooner fan, you should have this book. And Did you hear Toby talking about when we said that? Uh-uh. He <laughs> said it's not in the same ballpark as those two books, gentlemen. <laughs> but I appreciate it. <laughs> no, it is. It, it's okay. It in in collectors lore i guess Collector, okay you know what i mean yeah. it, it's something that you should have if you're a sooner fan yeah. i'm not saying it's the literal literary it's, it's the equivalent <laughs> i mean come on toby though you know it was it's uh it's pretty good ba- barry's book is a bootlegger's boy you know <laughs> come on no it's <laughs> so, still good though yeah it's a good book it's a fun read um and i I will be honest i mean i have read it a couple times and it kind of gives me goosebumps when i read it oh uh-huh. if you you know what toby needs to do is he needs to get Barry to read it for an audio version of it. Uh uh-huh, that'd be cool. <laughs> my boss, my, I have a boss right now that she's pregnant. I'm probably going to buy one for her kid before it's born. So yeah. Maybe I'll have Toby sign it on next Tuesday. So. Yeah. Um, you ought to get one for your friend up there in Stillwater. <laughs> your OSU friend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have any young kids, but. <laughs> well, just, uh, you know. <laughs> Don't you don't you send her, I do. I posters, send her posters every year and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she loves it too. Yeah, yeah, she does. But uh, but no, it is a great book. Go find it on Amazon. I know it's on uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, Tim ordered one the other day. Let me know he got it on Barnes and Noble. Uh, it is out there. Toby told us it was in some bookstores, about thirty something bookstores across the state. He's like, just tell everybody Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So Amazon. And it is an official licensed product of the University of Oklahoma, too. So, just like the official Toby Rowland Unhitch the Wagon t-shirts. The problem with the one that they're going to buy off Amazon or wherever, <laughs> it's not going to have the inscription that ours has. And that's correct. Which it's, makes ours special. Yeah, it makes ours uber special. And how are you going to get it? You're going to find out soon. It'll be the week of OU Texas. I mean, not, o- not OU Texas. OU Okie Stank. It's going to be fun, though. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. But to be to even have a hope of winning the book, you have to buy a shirt. And you're going to go, well, how do you know if I don't buy a shirt? That's the secret. There's a secret there. Okay. So We're just going to know. Just go buy your shirt. Go Unless buy your shirt. The, uh, what's that program called where you insert your face on somebody else's body? <laughs> Photoshop. Yeah. You're Photoshop. Good. You're good with the Photoshop. <laughs> you might be able to fool us. Yeah, but I mean, no, you, you need to just go buy. Every everybody wants a shirt. Everybody that sees them on Twitter is like, "Oh my God, where do oh, I get I that shirt?" So I wore it into Walmart, and dude was like, "Hey, where'd you get that?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Hey, www.unhitchthewagons.com. That's where you go get it. Read the shirt. No, what I did is I I was like, "Hey, there's a dude right outside the door selling them." He's like, "Really?" He's taking off out there. I just laugh. There's a reason why you don't go to Walmart, isn't there? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to get beat up at Walmart one of these days. <laughs> do you know what I thought we need to do, too? This is a business idea, Rob. Okay. Find out who owns the land across the street from your apartment. Yeah. And, you know, behind Walmart there. And open a driving range there. Nice. You know, people could come there. 
hour before the tee time. Yeah, because that's the only thing our our course doesn't have is a good practice range. Dude, I could be uh, some tin cup out there. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Rob out there in his straw hat and a <laughs> yeah. wife beater. <laughs> wife beater. Shanking four irons across. There you the go. Head. Do it all day long. Heck yeah. So if anybody wants to invest in a uh um you gotta you gotta buy some armadillos though. Yeah. You know and, and you want to invest in our um driving range just send us the money terry and i'll manage it yeah we'll both be golf pros <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right give golf lessons yeah and they won't make anybody better at golf but they'll sure make they you will. enjoy it a bit more because we're we'll teach them what not to do yeah yeah so if you Watch don't do the these <laughs> things you'll be better yeah, do the opposite of what <laughs> we do so, uh, but anyway, like, you know, back on the Toby Rowland book, go get Toby's book, Amazon.com, you know, Unhitch the Wagons, the story of Boomer and Sooner. Um, it's a great book. Um, and you know, if, if you've got a long time, my mom is going to love it. I'm going to get it for her for Christmas. She well, doesn't she's li- listening. She doesn't, she doesn't know how to listen to oh. the podcast. <laughs> okay. right. I've tried to show her. Even though she can push the play button on Facebook, she doesn't listen to it. Ah. She doesn't know how. Okay. So anyway, uh, but um, if you've got an elderly parent, my mom's 83 years old, she will. she's going to flat out love that book. Um, you know, kids, big OU fans, or anything else like that. But, you know, go buy it, but also buy your shirt and be ready to win the personalized with a message from the voice of the Sooners, Toby Rowland, from to us, to you. I think it's safe to say he's a close personal friend of mine and Terry's. <laughs> well, he said that last <laughs> night. He goes, you guys tell everybody you know, know me anyway. So Might yeah, as well I'll make it official. Picture. Yeah. <laughs> Took a picture with us. Yeah. Yeah. We did not hold him ransom. No, that. we did not hold him ransom. So yeah, He's such a great guy. Him, him, I, you know, I just love the, the show that they put on him and Teddy Boats. So. Yeah, and he is so, I mean, sir, if you've got to go to it, you know, it's – he is so personable when, you know, a lot, most times when we walk in, he says, hey, fellas, and, you know, or, you know. How's the podcast going? Yeah. So, yeah, both guys that listen. Are, yeah. You know. <laughs> they say, you know, me and Rob listen to it, and, you know, that's about it. <laughs> but um, anyway, Sooners, please, for the love of all things football holy, win this Saturday. That's all we ask. We don't. Oh. Mm-hmm. We got to bring that up too. They did ask Rob and I have quit the the competition, basically at the show, because I won. Oh jeez, you know you don't make me start it up again, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. But my basic, questions were worth two points, and yours were just worth one. Basically, Rob make and the rules, I have, just follow them. have sub- started submitting our questions as a team. <laughs> and last night, and I'll give Rob the credit. He was like, "Ooh, look at this one," and it was if you watched it. The show. Yeah, the question was: There was a young lady from Texas became famous. She made herself famous. Made herself famous. There's really not a question here. We just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> T- Teddy loved it. Teddy was like, ah. <laughs> so the coach. Yeah, he just kind of he just kind of grinned, yeah, I it. <laughs> but so uh, and you know we've started off our modeling careers. If you've seen us on Twitter and Facebook and our and our and our, our unhitch the wagon shirts, so. You know, things are looking up for us. Any day now, somebody's yeah. going to approach us and want us to model stuff. We're right. Gonna yeah, we're going to be on the cover so, of yeah. of Sooners Illustrated in our bathing suits. Well. Does, does Sooners Illustrated have a bathing suit edition? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, that's a podcast, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Make sure and uh, share it with your friends. Download it. You know, ring the bell. All the stuff you're supposed to do. Rate us on iTunes. Say something about us. It moves us up the the ladder on uh, Sooner Podcasts on iTunes. Whatever you can do to help us, we need it, please. Anyway, that's it. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. (laughs) 